Greetings everyone. So, in this video, I'm going to discuss taking this piece of recovered waveguide and making it a transition, like from waveguide to coaxial SME connector. Yeah, this is a piece I recovered. I frankly do not know where or when or it was given to me, but it happens to be a WR90 waveguide. So, pure luck, pure coincidence. I think WR90 along with WR75 are those that are mostly used for the 10 gig uh, range of frequencies. This one, I believe, was used in the 9 to 10 gig frequency range. And the reason I'm saying this is, um, while this is actually a microwave switch for pulsing applications, and it contains a transmitting tube, if we can say so. It's a GL1B35, which is a, a pulsing uh, unit uh, from a General Electric. Uh, so we don't need this. This is old stuff. If you look at the date, it's actually, I don't know what the date is, but it's in the 70s or 60s for sure. So we don't need this. Actually, we don't need this end. This would be really hard to reuse as a simple waveguide. We'd have to block the hole inside uh, to make it a continuous waveguide. But this end here, if you measure, and you can see I've already scratched a line. This is one inch and a quarter, exactly the dimension I need. So I marked it on the waveguide and I intend to cut it right here as straight as possible, perpendicular to the waveguide. I'll probably uh, use a sandpaper on a surface or file it to, to, to make sure that it's really square. And I'll be using, at least initially, some copper tape, um, so self-adhesive uh, copper foil, to uh, just plug the end and make some first measurements with the intent, of course, of soldering a harder piece of uh, copper at the end here. As far as the probe goes, well, this is what I intend to use, and here's why. There's a paper that was written by uh, W1GHZ uh, from 2006 that uh, really detailed how to make your own transition from waveguide to coaxial. And if you look at what he used, the probe dimensions are exactly what I have here. It's 50 thousandths of an inch wide. So that will work perfectly well. It's got some Teflon, like what he's specifying. So when you traverse the waveguide wall, uh, it will be a Teflon interface. And then Teflon will end inside the cavity. Uh, flush with the inner surface and then the probe will be cut to the right length uh, to match the 10 gigahertz 10.368 uh, required length for the probe. So I essentially have everything I need but I don't get two chances. I need to do it right, cut it right here. The other thing I wanted to mention is the flange itself. Is this a standard part of a waveguide? Absolutely. This is a UG39U type flange, and it's exactly the same flange I have on the dish itself. So this is absolutely compatible with the flange on the, uh, on the dish. Uh, so much that the whole spacing, and it's not square, maybe it doesn't show, but it's not quite square. Uh, the whole spacing is correct. It, it truly fits what we have on the dish. So this is the perfect piece and will save me at least $100 if I bought this on a used market. Uh, I would pay yeah, close to $100. Maybe in Hamfests it would be cheaper, uh, but they're getting scarce because a lot of people get onto 10 gigahertz. And such unit in the new market is something like four, five, six, seven hundred dollars $700. Yes, you heard it well so much just for a transition. So I will recover this part. It'll be much cheaper for my project, considering I didn't even pay a penny for this. Okay, so this is the plan. I will execute 
my plan, cut this thing, install the probe at the exact right location, cut it to the exact length, and I'll be testing it on the dish. We're going to verify that the VSWR, or if you prefer the return loss, is good on the dish. So stay tuned. See you soon. 7-3.